Hello everyone, my name is the RetroDan, and today I'm here to talk to you about some of my guilty pleasure games. And by guilty pleasure games, I mean those games that when you're scrolling through your Steam library, you look at them and you open them because you know you're going to procrastinate on that game for the next 20, 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, or however long you feel like playing them. And you play them not to achieve something in specific, but just to make the time pass or because you're trying to procrastinate your way through the day. These games are not in any particular order. They are just games that I turn on from time to time whenever I want to pass the time, just as I said. I'm going to start this list off with the weirder one on the list, which is LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga. I know it's a very weird guilty pleasure game to turn on, you were expecting probably something that's more short term, like a roguelike game or an arcade game, but this is the first game I decided to put on this list because it's a game I play at least sometimes a year, I play it every year because it's my childhood game, it's a, the game that probably got me into Star Wars, which I'm a big fan of, and I complete it at least one, one time per year. And I really like this game, it's just that game that I can get into and play, turn my brain off and just enjoy the regular old LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga. It's The game is always the same, it never changes, it doesn't have runs, it's just going through the levels, collecting the characters, collecting the mini kits, and, and I just enjoy it and I will keep enjoying it for the rest of my life this it's one of my favorite games of all time go figure next here on the list we have none other than bloons tower defense 6 and this is a game a lot of people play it's a very good game if you don't know bloons you should it's very cheap on steam whenever it is on sale and even when it's not on sale it's basically a game where you upgrade your monkeys and have them defend uh, various maps from balloons uh, so the balloons come and you have to make your monkeys stronger in order for them to pop the balloons and then there's a whole bunch of mechanics you can figure out once you get into the game there are upgrades there are constant constant updates to the game which give you more monkeys newer monkeys newer upgrades and everything you can imagine there are events with special campaigns there are co-op modes daily challenges basically this game has a lot of bang for its buck if you want a cheap game you can go into and deposit a lot of your time and explore with your friends and stuff like that bloons is probably the game to go with in this case uh, and it's it's, it's really fun. I've been playing it for about 70 hours now. I pop in from time to time to complete an achievement. Uh, if you can see my gameplay here in the background, I was going for an achievement on this specific game mode for 100 rounds. Uh, but this is a good game to turn on from time to time when you have nothing to do. The next game is also a weird one, which I'm going to pop into here for all of you old heads just like me, even though I'm not that old, but I'm starting to feel old when I'm talking about games like these, which is Zuma. Uh, if you don't know Zuma, it's an old arcade-ish game published by by PopCap or developed by PopCap I'm not even sure. In which you play as a toad and you go through these arcade levels where you have to use your toad to clear out balls. I know that for some of you who are younger nowadays this might seem like a browser game but I mean back then when I had a very very old laptop I used to spend hours playing this game and when once I discovered it was on Steam I paid the euro it cost me and I just played like the entire first five levels and I've been hopping on from time to time to just clear some levels and play some Zuma. I mean I just just put a video on my left monitor and enjoy the game for what it is. It's not much, but you, it can, you can pass the time. I mean, this is what I mean by guilty pleasure games. For the next game, we have something that's totally unexpected if you've been watching the channel for the past few days, which is Warframe. Uh, so Warframe is the guilty pleasure game that might have consumed the most time out of all the games I'm mentioning in this video because depending on the Steam account I'm using, I am like hundreds of hours deep into Warframe. I'm going through the quests every day I hop on, I do my daily stuff, I complete my sorties, I do my Nightwave challenges and I hop on Hydron from time to time so I can get my mastery rank up. And it's just the endless grind that Warframe is. I like the game very much, I won't deny it, it's one of my favorite games. I like the MMO aspect of it, I don't mind farming, I, I come from a WoW classic background so that's nothing new to me. I like playing with friends, it's a very fun game to play with friends as well, and the community is awesome with Warframe, what can I say? It's just that game that keeps pulling me into it again and again throughout the years, and it's a game that I'm probably never going to stop playing, especially because I've invested some money into it, which I shouldn't be saying right here. But yeah, it's it's Warframe, what else to say about it? Next, we move into a game that I've also put over 100 hours into, which is Vampire Survivors. Now, this is a game I've been playing since its release, and this game originated a huge passion inside me for the genre it's in. Uh, I have bought and played a lot of games like Vampire Survivors, but until now, none of them have 
have beaten Vampire Survivors in terms of quality. Uh, if you know Vampire Survivors, you know basically what it consists. It's a reverse bullet heaven game where you have to get stronger and play like 30 minute sessions of maps. I've gotten everything in the game. I've played 130 hours, got all the 200 or something achievements and I'm making just I'm just making my characters stronger and hopping in from time to time to have a fun 15 to 30 minutes because I genuinely have nothing else to do in the game and that's just my approach to it. I played it for very long sessions when I used to play it but now it gets harder to enjoy the game for longer periods of time since whenever I go in I just literally try out different builds but the variety doesn't go very far so I just either try that or go for endless runs which are not very fun because it gets to a point where you can't even lose you're just standing there and the game is playing by itself. Of course I had to add a little roguelike or roguelite game to the list and that game for me is definitely Gunfire Reborn. I have to give a shout out to Proxidist because he is the guy who put me into this game and I loved it from the moment I, I saw it in the first time. It's a roguelite made by a Chinese company, I have no idea what the name of the company is and I'm not going to look it up, but it's an FPS roguelite with RPG elements to it. The runs are like half an hour to 40 minutes depending on what, on what difficulty you are playing. There are a lot of characters and the mechanics and the weapon variety are really good, so if you like roguelite games and FPS games, I think you should definitely try this out. Don't dis discard it or disregard it because of the aspect. I've seen some people say it is the furry roguelite, but it's nothing like that. And if you are interested in roguelike or roguelite games, and especially FPSs, you should definitely try this game out. And to end off this list of guilty pleasure games, I thought I'd put something in which also has a huge community and is one of the games I suck at, which is Geometry Dash. I, I've been playing Geometry Dash for a few years. I started on phone like over 10 years ago. That's just how old this game is. Well. I'm saying 10 years because my head maths are pretty much calculating that it was probably over 10 years because I was in 6th or 5th grade when I started playing it, but this game is like Blooms, like Vampire Survivors, it keeps evolving, getting updates, it has new modes that are very fun. Uh, the community behind it is huge. I suck at the game, I can't even beat a demon level. I've beaten most of the campaign levels and I'm going through the gaunt gauntlets and stuff, but despite those things, there's not much I do in the game. I just hop in from time to time. I repeat some levels I've already beaten just to pass the time, like any guilty pleasure game. I'm not looking into going into leaderboards and playing super difficult demon levels like every high level Geometry Dash player is doing. Because yeah, this is a game with a very try hard community community that beat very hard levels and if you go look up hard demon levels on Geometry Dash on the YouTube community you'll be impressed by the quality of gameplay that you'll find because there are some very skilled people out there. But yeah, I thought I'd record this video for you guys to tell you about what I do, what I do to procrastinate when I have some free time and what are the games I fill this time with. Uh, these games are not expensive, any of them you can get for under 5 euro on the Steam library, so if you are able to get them, maybe make them your guilty pleasure game and try to spend some time with it, find your fun inside of it. And if you have your own guilty pleasure games that you like to play, make sure to leave them in the comments because I want to know what you play. Maybe I'll make one of your favorite games, one of my favorite games, and I'll procrastinate on them in the future. But other than that, this has been the Retro Den, and I'm out.